After the end of communism, poachers massacred wild animals. The Shemi and the Ibex in Bulgaria are on the verge of extinction. Until 10 years ago, in a place untouched by people in the Rhodopis is a paradise for high mountain wildlife. Will the trophy hunt be able to revive them from the ashes of destruction? This place is the best kept secret in Europe. It's amazing what you can see over here and what you can do over here with a bow. We came to this secret area, not for everybody. <laughs> we came to this area within the first half hour. We saw many, many chamois. See with your own eyes the priceless wild treasure that locals take care of tirelessly. But in order to protect it, we will hide the destination from you. We will keep its location anonymous, but we will show you the hunting temptations of the secret place. Well, I'm back for my second opportunity at the Balkan Chamois. I call them do-overs. When you go on a hunt and you don't get one and you really want that species, it's a do-over because you got to go back. And you're looking at the king of do-overs. You know, for my Super Slam and North American Big Game, I did 54 hunts for 29 animals. So, you know, I get, you get used to do-overs. And so you just resign yourself to the fact that you're going to do whatever it takes to try to get it done. And if you don't get it done, you're going to have to come back and try again. And uh, that was the key. I went on four desert sheep hunts before I completed my Grand Slam of Wild Sheep and the Super Slam. I'm sure you've all probably seen that footage. A uh, very emotional time for me. But that's because it's hard, and it's because you want to get the shot, and you want to get the kill on video, and there's a lot of things going on, and all of the pressure just builds. You just measure the horns on a chamois, whether it's male or female. The males have about heavier bases and uh, heavier horns altogether, but the females, even though they're thinner, a lot of times they're a lot longer. And so either one is just a fantastic accomplishment because they are small, they're really good eyesight, and they're tough to hunt. What we're doing is we're staying in town and we're driving about two hours to the little village where we're going to hunt. And then we go up in a Russian little car, four-wheel drive car, which is amazing, climbs mountains. We get to the top and then we have to hike farther to get into position. It's about a three-hour trek from the time we leave our hotel to the time we get on top of the mountain. Once we get up here, it's really a different world. I mean, there's big forests all around us and then it's kind of bald on top. There's big cliffs like this. There's, there's big, huge cliffs below us. And so it's really a mecca of just a beautiful place to hunt. And there's a lot of animals, and that's key. You know, this is one of the places where you can come and see 30, 40, even 50 Balkan chamois in a day. That's crazy. And you're not gonna get an opportunity at all of them, and you may not get an opportunity at any of them. But you're gonna have animals around, and that's a big deal. A lot of times on mountain hunts, you might hunt for sheep for three or four days and never see a sheep. And then if you see one, it may not be a legal ram. I had 19 days in the desert of Baja, never drew on a legal ram. That's a tough hunt. But here we have animals, so we just gotta figure them out. And I think the trick is gonna be move to the animals. You see animals, get where they can't see you and try to get closer. They've got four legs, I've got two. I want them to come to me, but that's not always the case. And many times in this real cliffy country, if you can get into a position where you can see down over the cliffs, a lot of times you can get close to these animals and they don't know you're there. When you're above them and it's heat of the day, the thermals blow up. When the thermals blow up, you're on the good side of the wind when you're above them. Now these animals look for danger above, so they're constantly looking all around. But if you get in the right place at the right time, you may be able to walk in on some. And that's the hope that we have on this trip, that we can get into range and get a shot. The other day I had an opportunity at one down in the bowl. It's about a 50 yard shot. I shot under them. It is what it is. You know, it's windy up there. It's you're, you see them, you don't know when they're going to run. You go to full draw. You want to make sure the video's running and then you take the shot. I shot them for 50 and shot under them. You know, it probably, the animal is probably 80 yards away, but with the ballistic yardage, my rangefinder calculates that. It said shoot for 50 and that's what I did. But you know, there's a lot of things that can happen. You miss, it's a do-over. It might be the only shot I get. You never know. It's exciting to be here. It's a lot of fun. We're going to keep after it. I've got a few more days to hunt, and it's what you do. You just keep pushing it, and you keep pushing it. And if I don't get one, I'm going to come back. There'll be another do-over. Well, we're here at the top of the mountain. It's about a two-hour drive from our hotel up here, and we're another half hour from the cliffs. We come up here in a little Russian Neva. This is a little four-wheel drive. You'd be surprised how a little car like this can go through some really rocky terrain. 
in a Balkan chamois here in Bulgaria. It's a real cool morning, but usually I try to strip down a little bit because it gets sweaty when you climb and hike and go, and we've got quite a ways to go to get to the top. So uh, we're gonna head up the trail, and uh, it's my second attempt at Balkan chamois, so this is not an easy hunt. Let's give it a go. We got an early start this morning heading up this canyon into a new area. And uh, they had said there were some caverns up this way, but I never imagined anything like this. We got probably another hour's climb to the top. It's just starting to really break day good into a new area for Balkan Chamois. Once we get up on top, we'll be out of the trees and into the alpine, and that's where these animals like to hide out. Lots of cliffs in this area, and uh, hopefully, we'll have a good opportunity. Just look how beautiful this is. This is just a gigantic cavern. Wow. Second attempt. It's October 13th. Lucky day. Looks like it's gonna be good. It's been chilly. It's been kind of a cool walk in here. 2,000 meters. So it's 6,000 feet. We'll see if we can't find this one.
range of 50 yards. Felt comfortable, it was a really steep downward angle. There was a big female, really long horns. First thing this morning, sun just coming up and I shot under. You can't get one unless you shoot. If there's an arrow in the air, there's hope. And that was Tom's second failed shot. Like last time, the angle of declination was more than 30 degrees, tricking him into thinking he was doing well. But he knew his bow wasn't performing as well anymore and needed to be checked out. One of the things you can run into on a hunt like this is having a target, having a way to practice. And when you get up in the mountains, you're gonna find out real quick that there's rocks everywhere. There's rocks everywhere to the point that you can't just find yourself a dirt bank to take a couple of practice shots with a, with a field tip because you're going to take a shot and the arrow's going to break and you're going to take another shot and the arrow's going to break. I was in Azerbaijan earlier this year and I went through like two dozen arrows trying to practice. They had a bag that they said would be a perfect target. It was filled with what they said was sand. Every shot I made into the bag, the arrow broke. And when you feel like you need the confidence of practicing, you want to shoot more arrows. And if every arrow you shoot breaks, pretty soon you go from two dozen arrows on a trip to about six left. And that really makes things dicey when it comes down to the hunt. You want to have as many bullets as possible in your quiver. One trick that I've found that really works well up on the mountain is to shoot at your backpack. Now I know that sounds crazy, but if you've got some field points in a pocket, you can pull off your broadhead, stick a field point on there. You can throw that backpack out 25 or 30 yards and get yourself a practice shot to get your mind straight, you know, to get your mentality to the point, to get your mind straight to the point where you've got that confidence. Because at full draw on a chamois, it's all about confidence. It's all about knowing that you're gonna be able to make the shot. And by being able to take that one practice shot up on the mountain, knowing that your sight's not bumped, knowing that your arrow's flying true, is gonna make all the difference in the world. And one or two small little pokes in your backpack isn't gonna make any difference, and you're still gonna have that arrow ready to go. And a lot of times what I like to do is I like to shoot that practice arrow with the practice tip, and if it flies straight, I pull the practice tip off, put the broadhead on, and that's going to be my shot arrow. That's the one that I'm going to shoot because I have the highest confidence in that arrow hitting the mark. The sound of dogs barking in the distance surprised us just as much as it surprised the goats grazing on the rocks below. We could tell this was going to be a good day because we knew the locals were about to go hunting for boars. And so, our luck began to turn. We knew it was only a matter of time.
the chamois passed right beneath us, at a distance of no more than 20-30 meters. Yet for Tom, it was nearly impossible to rotate his bow vertically. After the noise of the dogs and the driven hunt push the animals in a direction favorable to us, Tom decides we need to move to a better shooting location. You know, one of the tricks of being ready when an animal's coming in is understanding that you can't be looking head on to the animal. That You have to point your opposite shoulder. I'm right-handed, so I want to point my left shoulder towards the animal. So a lot of times when you're sitting in a blind or you're sitting in a place where you think the animals are gonna come out, you don't wanna face it. You wanna sit with your shoulder facing the way you wanna shoot. And what that'll do for you, it'll minimize movement. You've gotta think about being able to comfortably draw an anchor and make the shot. And you can't be moving around a lot. You can't be sitting like this looking over here and then see the animal and turn your whole body around and then draw your bow back. It's too much movement. They're gonna see it, they're gonna stop, they're gonna eye you down and you're not gonna get a shot. So what you gotta do is you gotta kinda think you know where they're coming or if you see animals at a distance and they, they don't see you, get yourself turned around and get your shoulder pointed in the right direction. You have gotta do that. If you don't do that, you're probably gonna be discovered, you're probably not gonna get your shot. And remember, it comes down to that one good shot opportunity. You're probably not gonna get two. You're probably not gonna get any more than one. And so you have to make that count. And that is the key, being in a position to where you can shoot. I've got a quick story. I was hunting Pyrenean chamois. I was on this really, really steep place. I had the guide with me, he was gonna run camera for the kill. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. There's a trail right below us. We think that they're gonna come across on that trail. We hear rocks rolling, we get ready. Here come the animals, they cross a little clearing. They're coming right on the exact same trail. And then all of a sudden they swerve and they go on one trail farther down the mountain. I'm at full draw, but I can't get my bow low enough because of the way the hill rode. I should have drawn my bow beforehand and moved it down into position to know that I could put my pin on an animal that far below me and make a shot. So the reality was my bottom of my bow limbs were hitting against the ground and I couldn't get the bow any lower. The animals got away from me. I didn't get a shot. You learn really fast when you make a mistake like that because I went on that trip and I didn't get one and I had an opportunity and I blew it. So don't make the same mistake I made. Always know that you can get the shot. Most chamois had withdrawn from the rocky terraces and were situated to spend the afternoon in a safe place by the rocky edge.
right at the place where the goats are located, Tom had missed during his previous stay in Bulgaria. Now there were tens of animals there. We had to wait for the opportunity to stalk them. At some point, they were bound to return to their favorite rocky ravines. Time was running out, and the chamois had been standing there for ages. We were just about to give up when Tom decided that the risk was worth it. We weren't sure how the goats would respond, but they seemed pretty aware of our presence. The big question was whether they would panic and run away, or relocate without alerting the entire mountain. We got lucky, and one group had remained in the spot beneath the edge. They could not see us there because of the terrain's curvature.
Vulcan chamois. I think we just got it done. I think we got him. I think we got our Vulcan chamois right there. Yes. What a fantastic hunt. Look at the colors out there. Look at the beautiful mountain pass. Doesn't get any better than that. Let's give him a few minutes. Let's give him time. Oh. Boy, it's steep and slippery in here. This is the first blood right here. I shot him right back there for 25 yards. And look at this blood trail. Rage Two Blade Extreme gets it done. Pretty much had to be double lung or heart shot for sure. I'll tell you what, it's pretty exciting when everything finally comes together. When it's the first day of the hunt and you can get one, it's really exciting. And with this blood trail, he didn't go far. Let's go find him. Blood everywhere here. Look at this, blood. Look at this. Blood all over the rock. Blood on white rocks really shows up. Blood, 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 blood. Chamois, yes. You know, when you're blood trailing animals, you've got to look for blood on rocks, blood on sticks, blood on light things. But when there's white rocks like this, with blood splatter like that, you know you've got a good hit. Gravity's working against us here. This animal, once it passes away, it's gonna roll all the way down the hill. But we're gonna find him. Awesome. You know, we played back the shot, and you really couldn't see that the actual arrow hit because of the down over the hill. You know, we played back the video before we started to look for it, and that we think it might have been a female. You know, the way you can kind of tell the difference is the males kind of go up and they hook way around, where the females kind of go up and they don't kind of hook all the way over. The males are heavier though in the bases. You're allowed to shoot females this time of year as long as you don't shoot one with a baby or one with a young one. This one obviously wasn't with a young one and definitely was old enough to hunt. 25 yard shot. Let's go find him. There he is. <laughs> Balkan chamois, yes! Didn't go 100 yards. Look at this. Look at this. You can tell by the way these, these long horns hook down, it's a female. And you're allowed to shoot females this time of year when they're not with young. We had six or seven of them below us. And this one got inquisitive, working up towards the ridge. Probably seen some movement. We're kind of skylit right there on the edge, right on the horizon as they come up this cliff. But beautiful facial markings. So we got the 25 yards. I put the hammer down. Didn't go 100 yards straight downhill. Chamois hunting is a challenge. It's a challenge because they're not very big. I mean, you can see how big this animal is, 85, 90 pounds max. And they've got really good eyesight. And they can see anything moving anywhere. So you've really got to be still and you've got to be careful and you've got to make an accurate shot. 
25 yards, slam dunk. He made it to right here. What a fantastic hunt. The Balkan Chamois in Bulgaria. I just love bow hunting, and this is why. What a challenging hunt. Beautiful animal too, huh? Stay tuned for the next adventure as Tom returns in pursuit of a world-class chamois that could potentially be a new bow hunting world record. The best may be yet to come from this secret place.